Let me introduce our guests today. They are young, smart, good-looking kids who have murdered in the name of Satan. 18-year-old Pete Rowland joins us via satellite from the Missouri State Penitentiary where he is serving a life sentence without possibility of parole. Pete helped beat to death a classmate as part of a satanic sacrifice. 19-year-old Sean Sellers, the youngest inmate on Oklahoma's death row, also joins us via satellite from prison. Sean killed first a convenience store clerk, later his own mom, his stepfather. After shooting his parents at point-blank range as they slept, Sean performed a satanic ritual around their bodies. The critics be damned. Devil worship is real, ladies and gentlemen, and it is influencing our young people. This is a follow-up to last month's special. Why are kids attracted to this stuff? How can they commit these heinous acts? What can be done to prevent them from doing it? From prison via satellite, young satanic killers, their tragic stories are the focus of this special edition of Geraldo. After we aired Devil Worship, exposing Satan's underground, we were literally inundated with letters and phone calls from churches, from schools and colleges, from police departments and community groups, asking for copies of that program and for more information about Satanism. Even the United States Army and members of Congress asked our help in learning more about the extent and the diabolical influence of Devil Worship. Because the issues raised are so troubling, and because the response was so overwhelming, we've decided to take another look at one aspect of Satanism that is perhaps the most troubling, the most disturbing. That's its influence on young people. Before we talk via satellite with Pete and Sean, meet their families, other experts, let's take a look back at our broadcast. Being into heavy metal doesn't necessarily mean your kid's also into Satanism, and most of these fans are not. But there is an undeniable connection between obsession with the really hard stuff and the occult. Although Satanism is more obvious in the lyrics of groups like Megadeth, Slayer, Venom, and Iron Maiden, in St. Petersburg, Florida recently, satanic symbols filled the air at this concert by Danish-born King Diamond. Personally, I am a Satanist, a practicing Satanist. But we never tried to preach that religion to anybody. Bull. An avowed Satanist, Diamond's protest that he's not preaching is belied by lyrics laced with references to death, graves, and evil. Of course, to some, it's just rock and roll rebellion. Satan has nothing to do with this kind of a concert. It's just run out, let them have a good time. Parents, they go Satanism their kids. It's killing their kids. It's not killing their kids. The parents the are parents screwing up in the beginning. It. We're the next generation. Yeah. Like and you it. like it? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever the connection, there is no doubt that teenage satanic activity in this country is increasing dramatically. In Maine, a dozen churches were defaced with satanic symbols. In California, New Jersey, Alabama, and elsewhere, police have found inverted crosses and the remains of mutilated animals. But by far the most frightening of all are the reports of teenagers killing other kids in Satan's name. Item Douglas County, Georgia. I'm sorry for you, young lady, and I sentence you to a term of life in prison. I'm sorry for you, and I wish you good luck. Remove her from the courtroom, Mr. Chair. 17-year-old Melissa Ernest and two other teenage members of her coven admitted drinking her 15-year-old victim's blood, then dancing around her still warm body. Now listen to this report from a small town in Maine. Yesterday's conviction of Scott Waterhouse for the murder of 12-year-old Giselle Cody may finally bring an end to talk of a satanic cult in the town. Item Long Island, New York. Police arrest 17-year-old Ricky Casso for the ritual murder of 15-year-old Gary Lowers. Casso gouged out his victim's eyes. As we've seen, the level of violence in these crimes committed in Satan's name is often appalling and savage, brutal enough to shock even hardened police officers. Detective Paul Hart thought he had seen everything. 
Then this veteran New Jersey officer saw how a suburban teenager murdered and mutilated his own mother. Just barely 14 years old, Tommy Sullivan had written this contract with the devil before he butchered his mother with his Boy Scout knife. The murder took place in the basement of the Sullivan family home. Tommy died uh, as brutally as his mother did, but at his own hands. What did Tommy then manage to do to himself? What wounds did he inflict on himself to kill himself? His first uh, self-inflicted wounds were a series of wounds to his wrists. And after doing that, he literally slit his throat from ear to ear with his three and a half inch knife from the windpipe all the way back to the spinal column. And to the point of almost taking his head off. Late one night last December, four teenagers who had been dabbling in Satanism carried baseball bats, a cat, and a length of rope to an isolated spot near their small town here in Missouri. By the time the night was over, the cat had been mutilated and one of the boys beaten to death by the other three, who then dumped his body in a well. One of the kids who did it, Pete Rowland, is now serving life sentence without parole here at this maximum security facility in Fulton, Missouri. The other two boys, his classmates, were also sentenced to life. It basically started out like with the killing of animals. Then there's always the heavy metal music and drugs don't help. The boy deceived was 19-year-old Stephen Newberry, who then took the first of some 70 blows as his classmates swung their baseball bats. You hit him? Yes. In the head? Yes. How many times? A lot. The devil double-crossed you? Yes. It just leads to your own destruction. There were some things that I saw that I sh feel like I should have paid attention to. I saw the album covers, and they're hideous. I just assumed that if they sell it, it's got to be OK. I assumed it was a passing phase. I had my things when I was that age. I assumed that he had his. I assumed wrong. Here is the lady who made that fatal assumption. This is Penny Bayard. She is Pete Rowland's mom. Pete, as you have just heard, is doing time for the satanic murder of his classmate, Stephen Newberry. Penny, do you want to say hello to Pete? Hi. Hello, Mom. <laughs> yes, uh, a, tr a tragic way you to meet. I'm going to be talking to Pete, but let me ask you, Penny, what changes did you see in your son as he began this descending spiral into <clears throat> devil worship, into this satanic stuff? Well, I, I think mostly what I noticed was, like I said before, he, he avoided us as, as a family. He didn't want to be around us. I think back, and, and I remember times where I, I would come home and fix dinner. He would come home, go to his room, and when my husband and I were through eating and had left the kitchen, then he would come eat and then go back to his room. He avoided us. That's, you know, it was, you know, no more family life. His friends didn't come around anymore. You know, I look at, I look at your boy. I look at your son. I mean, he seems so normal. I mean, a good-looking kid, a kid that you would assume had everything going for him, that had everything to live for. And yet he kills Steve Newberry. The first time you heard that your son had committed this literally diabolical act, did you believe it? Yes, but I was mad at him because I knew that he knew right from wrong. Pete, do you think that you did, at the stage you killed Steve Newberry, know right from wrong? Well, I just, I wanted to do bad. How do, you my beliefs. How do you explain, Pete, to your mom sitting here, to the studio audience, to the millions of people watching, how a kid like you could commit an act as brutal, as savage, as, as uncaring as the, the murder of your buddy? I mean, how do you explain that? Why did you do this? Well, I just, I'm, there's no really way that you can explain it. I really never felt good about myself, low self-esteem, and things that I've seen in the Satanism, I thought I'd get power and popularity, and, and I felt like I had a place of belonging in life. That Satanism made you belong? Yeah. Mom? The question I asked him one day was, and this, this was long after the trial and everything, I, I didn't discuss it with him for a long time, and I asked him how he could kill a friend. 
And he told me that he had no regard for his life. He had no regard for Stephen's life. And Stephen was involved in this also. He said he knew Stephen had no regard for life or his own life. So it seemed as if it didn't make any difference. Pete, is that, can that be true, that a death, a murder, didn't make a difference? It really didn't to me, because I, I considered thoughts of suicide myself. And I just, it, I felt like he was me in a way, because he had some of the same beliefs as me, and he was kind of like me. If I cared about myself, I wasn't going to, you know, really care about somebody else that was like me. And the, and the kid that started it all, the kid that got you involved in this, was the president of your senior class? Well, yes. What was so seductive about Satanism? What was so attractive to you? What was the reason that you throw away your life, you stick a knife in your mother's heart in a figurative sense and, and literally take a baseball bat to your buddy's head? What is it? Help us. Well, there's curiosity and just like I said over and over again, it's power. I, just the sense of like a um, machoism or something make me feel big, uh, like a king in a sense, how, how he'd feel over all his servants. Pete, how do you feel now? <clears throat> well, I, I really don't feel too good. It's, as far as all this, what's happened, and but another way I feel better because I'm away from that stuff, and I know that people love me, and I'm a, and I'm a Christian. And you love him, Mom? Very much. Never more. <laughs> and the fact that he's facing a life sentence without a possibility of parole, 18 years old. Well, that's his life. That's what it is. I have no choice. Sean Sellers from Death Row in Oklahoma. At least Pete will have the rest of his natural life to think about these things. Sean Sellers' life may be cut short by a lethal injection. His story after this break. Charles R. Johnson, an experienced leader in dental implants. I feel as if I have my own teeth. I feel like it's just a part of me. Experience and advanced technique give Dr. Charles R. Johnson another answer to tooth loss. I wish I'd known about it five years ago. I'd have done it then. It's a reliable alternative to plates or missing teeth. I feel better about myself. And it Call Dr. In, Charles in R. Johnson. Collect at 848-3719. Drawn College can put you on the fast train to success. Fast train. Now get the very best training in less time. Choose a career with a great future. Executive secretarial, computer accounting, computer programming, medical assistant, nursing assistant, travel and tourism, electronics, and computer repair. Fast train. Get your career in gear. Call Drawn College about the fast train system. Our focus from prison, young satanic killers, as you can see, to Pete Rowland, we now add Sean Sellers. Sean is the youngest inmate on Oklahoma's death row. 
Uh, he was one of the youngest ever placed uh, in that particular facility. Sean murdered first a convenience store clerk, then some months later, his own mother and his stepfather in a brutal fashion. Here in the studio, we have Tom Wedge. Tom is a police officer. He is a specialist on the occult. He has been a consultant on over 200 satanic-related crimes. He was called, interestingly enough, by Sean Sellers' defense attorney to testify on Sean's behalf to the extent that what Sean did was satanically inspired and was not what has come to be called a thrill killing. First, Sean, I wonder if in Pete's story, in his feelings, in his motivation, in the insanity that drove him, this, this satanic worship, you, you heard things familiar to you, to, your, to what motivated you to commit this triple homicide. Yeah, I can really relate to Pete just real well. It's everything he was saying really hit home with me. There's such an attraction to Satanism in power, curiosity, as he was saying, and even more important is a place to fit in, a need to be wanted by your peers, to fit in where you don't fit in where, any, where you don't fit in in anywhere else. And um, let me ask you, Sean. You seem okay. so logical. You seem so lucid. So you understand apparently so well. Why did you kill your mother? Why did you kill these other two innocent people? There is no good reason why. There never is. I can't answer a why. I can tell you what happened in my life to, that led up to it and what was going through my mind at the time, but that doesn't really present a reason as to why. In Satanism, you learn that good is evil and evil is good. And I was going through a lot of problems. I knew the difference between good and evil, as Pete was saying. But I began to question good and evil. I began to ask, why is stealing evil? The Satanic Bible says that we are survival of the fittest. And if I steal from a person, then that means I am more craftier, or, or I am quicker, or more cunning than this person. So why should I not steal? Why is killing wrong? I knew killing was wrong, I knew stealing was wrong, but I couldn't find a reason for it. Everything that I had learned in Satanism, everything that I had learned through my life, and every time I looked at a society and saw how everyone treated everyone else out there, I saw the ideals of Satanism. And so I had to believe that evil was good and good was evil. Do you, and in the sense of the law, Sean, feel responsible? For those no, three murders. There is no one else responsible that I. It was my life. I got involved in Satanism. And a lot of things that led to that may have caused me to commit these murders. But I am still the one responsible. I am still the one that will have to pay the price. I am still the one that has to live with it day by day. I have to live with the nightmares of killing my parents. I have to live with the thoughts of killing an innocent man for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And it's my responsibility and mine alone. The state of Oklahoma has said that because of what you did, your life, Sean, teenager though you may be, is forfeit. You are condemned to die. Right. That's, Do you feel that's... they should take into account your bizarre affliction, the Satanism? Yeah, I think they should. But it's still a good boy's chance. I'm the one responsible. See, Satanism took from Pete his life and it's given me death. And that's all that Satanism is going to lead to. And although I wish they would look at the case, look at what was going on in my mind, look at the person that I am now and the work that I am doing now, trying to reach out and make a difference in other people's lives, it's still my responsibility and it's something I'm going to have to live or die with however they plead. I, plead, I ask for mercy, but it's up to them as to what they're able to decide Let on. me be a cynic. Let me okay. be a, not a devil's advocate, an angel's advocate perhaps. Let me say, that sure, Sean Sellers is redeemed now. Sure, Sean Sellers recognizes the diabolical nature of his deed. Sure, he feels sorry 
that he murdered three people, including his natural mother, his stepfather. Sure, because he's facing death on death row in Oklahoma. How, why should we believe that you're sincere now, sir? I could be the biggest con man you ever knew, and uh, you don't have to believe I'm sincere, but you just look at the things that I'm doing now. Look at my life now. See who the person I am now. See, look, look at my past before Satanism. Look at the person that I was in school and the person that I was before I got involved in the occult and compare the two and see what Satanism did to my life and how it changed me and take that into account. Look at everything under that context and you'll see what Satanism is all about and what it can do to people's lives. And I think that should uh, be some mitigating evidence in my case and Pete's and other people who get involved. Should we, Tom Wedge? Take those things into account? Should we? Well, Sean knows where I stand um, as a Christian. He knows where I stand on capital punishment. As I That's another with, argument, sir. As I shared with Sean in Oklahoma, I said, Sean, if you die by lethal injection, you know as a Christian, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So, you know, whichever way it goes, the thing is that Sean has nothing to lose now. Uh, so, you know, I don't see him coming across as, as playing a game on Christianity and so forth. And, and one thing that I Let want to... Let me ask you more specifically. All right. I want to move away from your deeply held, sincere religious beliefs. I want you to talk to me as a cop now. All right. Why is this man a satanic killer rather than a thrill killer? Because the simple fact is, when Sean went there, uh, as, as, as in my book, The Satan Hunter, the first chapter deals with the entire story. When Sean went there, he worshipped before an altar there in his home. He worshipped at his altar. He went through blood sacrifices, eating, drinking his own blood, writing in his blood. He went there with, with, one, with one thing in mind, and that was to kill the Circle K convenience store clerk because he had broken every one of the Ten Commandments except thou shall not commit murder. No money was taken. Absolutely no money was taken in that crime. And just as, as Pete's mother here, Sean's mother was searching as well, but there was nobody. That's why your program, I, I felt, was so important, because the church has fumbled the ball. The Christians has fumbled the ball. These we people are searching and looking, like this lady said right here. I appreciate that, but he killed his mother. Right, and he's got to suffer the consequences for it. Let's take a break. Here's your butter, Henry. Half. Half the calories of butter or margarine. Half what, Henry? My goodness. She's half your age. Put those eyes back on your toast where they belong, Henry. Next time, butter your bread with Philly instead. Only Sunkissed Children's Multivitamins have the delicious Sunkissed fruit taste kids love. Plus the essential vitamins kids need. Great vitamins! Great! Great vitamins plus great fruit taste only from Sunkissed. I've been asked to try something new at my laundry. Calgon water softener. Let's see what happened. I, I'm shocked. They look brighter, they look whiter, they look cleaner. There's a difference. These are a lot whiter. Calgon water softener for the cleanest wash in the hardest water. Geraldo. We'll be back in a moment. Win a fabulous BMW convertible instantly from Allergan. See details on special Allergan contact lens care packages featuring the instant win game. There's more. Rolex watches, Panasonic car phones. Anyone can win. Redeem five Allergan impact game cards and get a Black & Decker car back free. See details in Sunday's paper and redeem coupons for special savings on selected Allergan products. So stock up now. Find Allergan products at these fine stores and win instantly. Brown Sherbet. Flavors as full as the tropical sun. Mixed berry. Strawberry a l'orange. Apricot mango. Red raspberry. And, of course, there's pineapple, orange, and lime. Brahm Sherbet. Serve it so many ways. Or enjoy it just as you find it at your nearest Brahm's ice cream and dairy store. 
we took him to the hospital. Does this, look at this. It says, uh, Lucifer, my master. And it has the inverted cross. Leviathan, Lucifer, Satan. Uh, Sean did the same with the discovery that I got before the trial. Uh, Sean had written in his own blood. He had made pacts with Satan in his own blood. Um, Sean had uh, mutilated himself and uh, was using his blood for that. He got a job working at a clinic where he would take hypodermic needles and withdraw his blood from his body. It took also took anticoagulants and uh, he wrote in his writings to others don't eat or drink my blood because he didn't know if it would be harmful but Sean wrote the same type of packs made the same packs with Satan writing them in his own blood how far did they get in your son's case Randy uh, I guess the most I recognized was uh, when he was uh, he had a fascination for razor blades I never ever caught him carving himself up but I caught him just prior to doing that, and he told me at a later time that that was the night he was contemplating suicide. Did you ever look your son in the eyes and say, Kevin, we love you. Kevin, we don't understand this. What's going on? Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, we come from middle class America, mid-America. Uh, very close family, very loving, touchy-feely, very Christian, and uh, it was very frustrating because we, we, we lost contact with them. We couldn't communicate with them. I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil in two minutes. We're going to be broadcasting some very critical warning signs for you parents watching. Please get a piece of paper and a pencil. We'll be right back. For free tickets to Geraldo, please write Geraldo, Times Square Station, Post Office Box 684, New York, New York, 10108. Please send a self-addressed stamped envelope or call 212-265-1283. This little mousy has a craft single slice made from five ounces of milk. But this mousy has an imitation slice that's mostly oil and water. That's why craft singles taste better. Milk makes them better. Dieter's needs are different, so Accutrim developed three different formulas. I need all the help I can get. Accutrim Maximum Strength. I snack after 3 p.m. Late day strength. I'm hungry from morning till night. 16 hour. Accutrim. One is made for you. It's gonna be there a day early. Good morning, it's me. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Yeah, it's, good. Yeah, it's, good. it's already happening. People calling long distance with one free month of U.S. Sprint. Market is open. Coast, coast, coast. It's midnight here. We're just shutting down. Call Sprint now. Get one free month plus the best savings versus AT&T. This is one offer that seems to be catching on. Parents, warning signs that might indicate a child's drift towards Satanism include abrupt emotional changes, changes in school habits, rejection of parental values. Unusual interest in books on Satanism, black magic, or witchcraft. Obsession with rock music groups using satanic symbols or references. Rejection of friends. Preference for being alone. Meditation, chanting, use of new vocabulary. Geraldo. We'll be back in a moment. can put you on the fast train to success. Fast train. There's an urgent need for nursing assistance in this region. The new fast train system at Drawn College is helping fill these career positions by offering the very best training in the shortest time possible. Ready for a career in the medical field? Fast train. 
Call the nursing assistant division at Drawn College about the fast training system. RCA sales going on at Jim and Mary's, so if you're lazy like Jim... Lazy like me? Okay, like me. Get this RCA remote TV so you can sit back, relax, and kick your feet up like Jim. Like me? Oh, like me. Or if you got 16 grandchildren like Jim... Speak for yourself. Okay, like me. This camcorder can tape the grandchildren for the whole family's enjoyment. I'm family. What about my enjoyment? With an RCA TV and VCR in the bedroom, you watch movies while I tape the grandchildren. She's thinking of me. I fooled him. Catch the RCA sale at Jim and Mary's both locations. It's Beautyco's Big Beauty Care Sale. Yes, at Beautyco, you can have it all. That's right, all the professional products that make you look and feel great every day. All the beauty secrets, the new ideas today that make tomorrow styles. And trained beauty consultants to help you find just the right look for you. All this and all of Big Beauty Co. savings. At Beauty Co., you can have it all. Be beautiful every day, the Beauty Co. way. Come to Beauty Co. today. Our focus has been, from prison via satellite, young satanic killers. Dr. Nyberg, your Penny, or your Lori, or your Randy, parents, and you see your kid really slipping into some of the things that we just warned them about, the heavy metal, the, the dope, different friends, the graffiti. What do you do? There are a number of different places that, that are available um, in the community to get help. Be specific. Let's School go. counselors who are now becoming more and more aware of the problem and getting referral sources. Local clergy people, especially those with pastoral counseling backgrounds. The local police youth officer, youth officers around the country are now getting together and identifying the resources that they can make in terms of referrals. The local mental health agencies and places like the Cult Awareness Network, which is a national organization that is devoted solely to identifying and helping in getting the assistance that these people need. Pete, I want to ask you the same question, buddy. You're, in a perverse sense, the real expert, you and Sean. What advice do you give to a parent whose kid is falling, as you did, into the clutches of this demonic stuff? Show them that you really care about them. Show them love and that, that they're needed and they definitely belong in the family. That there's somebody, just always show them that you're behind them. Sean, same question. What do you do? You're a parent now, and it's your kid who's getting involved in this devil worship and stuff. Well, Pete and the professor gave some really good information to parents. I want to talk to uh, uh, the Christian body out there right now. A lot of reasons the kids get involved in Satanism is because they see hypocrisy in the Christian church. If uh, people are not standing up for their beliefs, then there's no reason to uh, join in on those beliefs. It is very imperative that those who know Christ, those who are Christians, stand up for what they believe in. Get rid of the uh, sin in our lives. Get rid of the hypocrisy in our churches and stuff. Start meeting the needs of the people around us. Start reaching out in love and in compassion and start doing what we're told to be done. I have a friend in, uh, in uh, Vancouver who just got saved about a week ago. He was a Satanist for three years. And he, the reason it was so hard to get him to come to Christ is because of all the hypocrisy around. Right now, Shea wants to be a soldier for Jesus Christ, wants to be a warrior for Christ. That's the kind of attitude we need. If people who know Christ will stand up for him and show the compassion to the people around him, then there will be less of an incentive to get involved in Satanism. Okay, there are the variety of services available. Sean, obviously, now uh, uh, deeply felt religious beliefs, Dr. Nyberg. Um, more avenues for those who are not uh, born-again Christians, the mental health community, school counselors. Who, Kevin, do you talk to? Mm, mostly my psychiatrist or my doctor. I mean, I'm not on dead. How do you feel? Good. You mm. think you have a handle on it? Yeah, sometimes I just lose it, you know, but... They help me. I wish that you could feel the love that we feel for you. We all want to be in your corner. We all want to help you. I mean, that's the devil worship stuff is no place. It's the fool's game. I mean, you're a good kid, so smart and good looking. I mean, the world is at your doorstep. I mean, come on. I'm going to bring you back next year for a follow-up, a success story. We'll be right back.
Some toys come with their own sound effects. Elmer's glue doesn't. Some toys are ready to go at the flip of a switch. With Elmer's glue, some assembly is required. With some toys, kids just use their hands. But with Elmer's glue all and Elmer's school glue, kids use their imagination, too. So instead of just zapping aliens, your kids could also be creating them. Elmer's, we let the imagination take hold. Schultz Body and Frame Shop at 3811 North Tulsa is your foreign, domestic, and Toyota specialist. Today's automobiles are so specialized that you need someone you can depend on and trust with your car. We've been in this business for 20 years, and we wouldn't still be in business if we didn't take extra special care with your car. We do framework for everyone. We open at 7.30 a.m., and many women and men have learned to trust the expert work at Schultz Body and Frame, 3811 North Tulsa. Call us. Job injuries, they're painful and expensive. Medical bills, lost income, and if serious, could you return to your job or work again? Although the Lauder and Pitts law firm hopes you never suffer a job injury, attorneys Mike Lauder and Jamie Pitts have written an easy to understand booklet showing you what to do and your benefits if hurt at work. For your free copy or to discuss an injury or other legal matter with experienced attorneys, call Lauder and Pitts, here to help you when you need us. You'll never have a better opportunity than right now with the Trust House Jewelers to save 30 to 50% off during our anniversary sale. If you're interested in diamonds, we have the largest selection of any store in any city. Do you love emeralds, rubies, sapphire rings? We have them to ab in abundance. We have the largest selection of earrings and pendants and the finest anywhere. Our tennis bracelets start at one carat and go as high as 10 carat total weight. That's Trust House Jewelers, 7800 block of North May Avenue. For transcripts, please send $3 to Journal Graphics, Geraldo Transcripts, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 10007. Or call 212-227-READ. Lori, we heard the various options that are available, but in your case, in your hometown in the Midwest, there was nothing, was there? Well, not really. We had Kevin in the hospital for four weeks, but it wasn't real successful. And I, Randy and I kind of got angry. But they kind of blamed us. They kept there was a, a, a parental problem. We we were told not to to mention it oh. that it didn't exist. Please, 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 folks, don't blame yourself. Seek help. Hopefully, after the special, after the, more of these programs, people will be hip to the fact that this is out there, that it exists. Tom, let me just. Uh, <laughs> The book is uh, The Satan Hum Hunter by uh, Thomas Wedge. It's a daring book. Please call the Cult Awareness Network if you think you have uh, a problem. We'll flash the number right after these credits. Pete, Sean, good luck to you guys. Uh, thank you for coming forward, giving your message. Kevin and all of you, thank you very much. Services have been furnished to the Geraldo Show in exchange for these announcements. Hotel accommodations in New York City provided by the Omni Park Central in Manhattan near Carnegie Hall, Central Park, and Broadway Theaters. Call 800-THE-OMNI or 212-484-3300. It reaches out, grabs the story by the throat, and doesn't let go until you know everything. A Current Affair, weeknights at 6.30, only on Channel 4. The gavel falls at noon today for the special session. Good morning, I'm Tammy Payne in the news. And coming up at noon, a live report from the state capitol where teachers are supporting the governor's tax plan. And a sensitive subject, sex and your kids. We'll have more at noon. News 4, going all out for Oklahoma. This week only, you cannot buy it for less. When you shop in the run pottery. Thousands of beautiful silk flowers, you cannot buy them for less. Biggest selection of baskets, from tiny to tremendous, and you can't buy them for less. First come, first serve, furniture savings. Like this fabulous brass and glass table with four chairs. Regular $169.95, this week only $89.95. You cannot buy it for less. When you shop in the run pottery. More than a pottery store. Here comes the sun, but even the sunlight can't brighten your morning like that first cup of mountain-grown Folgers. The best part of waking up 
his folders in your cups. Today at 4.30, only on Channel 4. NBC News at this hour. I'm Mary Alice Williams. Mississippi Congressman Larkin Smith is dead in a light plane crash in his home state. The plane was found in a forest 12 hours after it disappeared. Forensics experts are in Ethiopia waiting to identify the bodies from the plane crash that took the life of Texas Congressman.